Lainey also talked with Mindy Eskiger. She's a nurse in charge of administering rape kits for East Baton Rouge Parish. She explains why it's difficult for victims to come forward. So like we were talking about earlier, um, all the sexual assault cases in college students, the one specifically with Madison Brooks kind of spotlighted a bigger problem and it shocked a lot of people, but do you really think it's that shocking? No, of That's course something? not. Of course not. I mean, if you look at the stats nationally, some, some organizations report one in four, some report one in six women are victims of sexual violence at some point in their life, um, one in eight to one in 10 men. So no, obviously not, not a shocking thing. Right. And if you look at our numbers just in East Baton Rouge Parish, or really all of our region, um, they just keep growing every year. Right. With that growing number, we heard that one LSU student went to a local hospital to get a rape kit test done, and she told us that the nurse said about seven other girls go in a week to get those examinations done. Do you think that's accurate? So not necessarily seven college students. <clears throat> we are at, at a point here in Region 2, which is East Baton Rouge Parish and the surrounding parishes, where we, were, we do about one a day. So anywhere between three to 400 a year. Now it varies, sometimes it's four a day, sometimes it's none, but we average about 350 exams a year. So um, not those are not all college students, but, um, but yeah. Wow, that, that's a high number. It is a high about number. About one a day. One a day, and honestly, <clears throat> it's still not high enough. And I know that sounds strange for me to say, but we know that one in four women, one in six men are experiencing this so the numbers should be higher. Right, about how many of those that actually do come in, do you predict that they are actually college aged? So I looked at the numbers from 2021 and we did 324 forensic medical exams, which mm -hmm. is what we call them. It's, it's a rape kit, but it's, it's a little bit more than that. We know we take care of the whole patient, but um, 71 of those were between 18 and 24. Like how many college age students do you think don't actually go in to I get one done? I think there's probably a great number. Um, sexual assault is the most underreported crime and there are so many reasons for that, right? It's it's the culture that we live in. It's that victim blaming mentality that we have where we talk about um, what a victim was wearing or the fact that they were drinking. Mm -hmm. And so that really leads to underreporting, right? Also the fact that it's a shame-based crime. It's it's very personal, um, so it's it's very difficult for people to report. And so I, do, I truly believe not a lot of people come forward that okay. really should. And you said a lot of people don't actually report. Specifically for those college students at the university, why wouldn't they report it? For those reasons, just that it's, it's, it's a difficult, first of all, a college student is navigating a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes being away from home for the first time and having to take care of themselves where they had their parents to take care of them before. So it's just a lot to navigate. And then the whole peer pressure thing, you know, friend groups, and it just makes it very difficult to right. come forward. And one of the things I think it's important for people to know <clears throat> is there's a federal law that says, and we do a lot of this, you can come in to the hospital and do what we call a non-report, meaning I can take care of you, I can do a head-to-toe assessment, treat you, and test you for sexually transmitted infections, and collect evidence, and you do not have to talk to law enforcement, provided you're 18 years or older. You know, mm -hmm. we're mandatory reporters, so we, anybody that's 17, 364 and under, we have a duty to report. But um, if you're 18 and above, we can collect that evidence so it's not lost and hold it for up to a year and really indefinitely. Right, right, and whenever you worked at the university, you had, X amount of students come in a week. Um, how many of those do you think you should have seen a week? Like how many students at the university didn't actually come in and it's, report? It's really hard to say a number, but I, I would venture to say many. Mm -hmm. And we know recently another arrest was made for one of the defendants in Madison Brooks's case, and it stemmed back to Tigerland in the same bar, Reggie's. You know, did y'all see a lot of survivors come in and their incidents started at Tigerland as well? I mean, sure, sure we did. Um, really anywhere, and I, I'm real hesitant to blame certain places strictly because 
we want to put the blame on the perpetrators, right? We don't want to blame the alcohol. We don't want to blame the victims. We don't want to blame the places because it's going to happen no matter what. Um, but sure, I mean, that was, there was a, it's a common place for students to go. Really, not just students at specific universities, but students from everywhere. So, um, yeah, I mean, we did. Is there any other big piece of information that we should include or that I didn't ask you about? So just, I, I wanted to know, everybody to know about the non-reports, but also that it, even if you don't come in right away, we can collect evidence and give medical care for up to five days, 120 hours out. Um, and so we encourage people to come in. There's no pressure. Um, nobody's gonna force you to report. Nobody's gonna force you to do anything you don't wanna do. We just wanna be able to take care of these, these victims. Well, this has really shown what it's like from the victim's perspective. I mean, what other obstacles do they have besides reporting when it comes to sexual assault? Their daily life, I found by interviewing this one survivor, that their daily life is kind of hindered. She said she was uncomfortable at home even, and she said she was scared to go to school because her assaulter is also a student at the same university. She even told me she's transferring schools and moving out of state. So. You know, just daily life yeah. is a lot harder for these victims. And then also, go and get medical help after this happens. She didn't go get medical or report anything until a year later, because it was so hard to come to terms with that even getting medical help is a really big deal. And a lot of people don't even get that far. Yeah, you can see why it'd be underreported. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's important to note for these survivors that getting medical attention is very important. It's not supposed to be invasive, although it feels very invasive once again, but it's important for them to go get help and to know they don't have to report it to police or seek legal action. Well, thank you so much, Lainey, for coming in and giving those, those reports. Of course.